Alright guys, welcome back to the next many channel. Hit the like button guys. Let's go, let's go. Are we still on base? 2019. Right, right into it, guys. Right into it. Alright, so this is the instruction. Okay, for item 1 to 30 is only one correct answer. Indicate the response by shading the letter next to the answer. Use an example. It's given the rule. What is the value of r? If 7 plus 8 is equal to r, then r will be 3. Alright, so be shaded because it's the only correct answer. Let's get into it. The Venn diagram shows the snap that some children prefer. And it says, which students like both Cheetos and Bigfoot? So those who like Cheetos and Bigfoot would fall right here. So that would be Mark. Justin and Jay. So let's start off nicely with the first question. The expanding form of the number is shown below. Which represent the number in standard form. So if you multiply this, it would give us 2000. So guys, if you're going exam, just do that. Multiply, and then you basically add it up. I notice you have a plus sign in there. Plus 50 plus 6. So when you add this, you'll get 2,956. Let's move on to three. What is the next number in the sequence below if the pattern continues? So let us see what is happening. We are at 98 and we put 93. So they subtract the three here. We we'll subtract another three. And that means, yeah, we're going to subtract three from 86, which gives us 83. Subtract another tree, which gives us 80. So that will be C. Let's go. Move on to number four. Which of the following is not a factor of four? We have one, two, four, and eight. No, one is a factor, two is a factor, four is a factor. However, eight is not a factor, it's a multiple. So for number four, that would be eight. Hit the like button if you're just joining. Which operation should be placed in the box to make the number sentence below correct? So is it addition? 26 plus 3.5, is that equal to 9.1? Or is it 26 minus 3.5 equal to 9.1? Or is it 26? times 3.5 give you 91. Let's test out the multiplication one, guys, to see if, if it's that, all right? So in any exam, you don't want to take anything for granted, right? So it's a 5, 6, 30. 5, 2 is 10, and 3. So, Zero to all these days, three six is eighteen, eight carry one, three two six and one seven. Let's add now eight and three eleven, one carry one. That gives us nine ten, but remember it's one decimal place, so yes, which is multiplication. Let's move on to number six. The diagram represents the distance between town A, town B, and town C. Peter traveled in a straight line from town A to town C. If he stopped at point B of the journey, what did he cover? Is it 4%, 20%, 40%, or 60%? So 
Misanda, it's a new, but it's about 40%. So we have this one, two, three, four. So it's four out of 10, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So four over 10. So for that one, we're gonna go with C. Don't reach halfway for right? Okay? All right, let's go. Let's go with the like button, guys. Thanks for joining, everyone. Let's move to the next one. Square numbers such as one, four, nine can be formed by adding consecutive odd numbers beginning with one. Which is an example of this fact? Is it one, three, five, one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven, nine, or one, three, five, seven? No, one, three, five, nine, eleven. And that will be C, because we didn't skip any. With this, we we'll skip one, right? That is the C. Let's go, let's go with the light button. Number eight, read the pack, read the rule below, use it to answer number eight. In a pattern starting at the third term, each term is formed by adding two previous terms. Which pattern follow the rule? And notice they say starting with the third term. So you check it right with the third one. Adding the two previous terms. All right, so we have a zero and one, that is one, one and one, that make two, two and one, make three, two and three, make five, five and three, make eight, five and eight, make 13. So we don't need to go any further. Read them carefully, guys, it can be a bit tricky. The student in 6G were asked to name the sport they played. The data collected is shown in the event diagram. So we have cricket and football, and there we see 15 students play football and cricket, 20 play football only, 10 do not play any of them. What information do we need to determine how many students play cricket only? A, the number of students who played football, B, have that information already 35 students play football right it's 15 plus the third 15 plus the 20. the number of students who play cricket yes that would be it if we know how many students play cricket let us say it was 40 students in all play cricket all we have to do is say okay how many play cricket only just subtract those who play cricket and football so we have subtract the 15 and it could have been 25. So yes, if we know the number of students who play cricket, then we can get it. A parent that called me about a question similar to this. So the number there, 5.92161. Number 10, which of the following shows the reciprocal of the product of five and six? So first, let's just find the product. Product means to multiply, so we multiply. So this is the same as 30 over 1 to reciprocate or the reciprocal of 30 over 1 would be 1 over 30. Another word you can use is flip. So that would be D. Let's move on to number 11. 20% of a number is 35. What is the number? If you're in exam, what you can do is remember that 20% is the same as dividing by 5, right? So whatever the number is, you multiply it by 5, you get the answer, all right? So let's try to see if that is correct. 5, 5, 25. 5, 3 is 15 and 2, 17. Another way you could look at it, you could do the percentage way, say 20. Out of 100, as per set mean out of 100, times a number, I don't know what the number is, but it must be equal to 35. Or you can use trial and error, just find 20% 20, 20 of all of these numbers, right? So 
So transpose. This is more technical. We'll do the opposite now. So this dog times by a hundred and then divide. It is the same thing basically, but it's just a, a longer fancy method. So 20 into this one, 20 into this five. Five times that is 175. Hit the right button now, guys. What are you with? 50 students were shared between John and Mark in the ratio one to four, respectively. What was Mark share? So first let us write the ratio one to four. And they say John to Mark. So that means the first one is John. And the second one is Mark. So that means Mark get the bigger portion. All right. So it would be 4 out of the 5 because you add the total and times it by 50. 15 to itself 1, 15 to this 10 times, and then we multiply 4 times 10, which is 40 sweets. So there you have it. Mark would have gotten 40. Type in the comment section what would be John share. Let's go. Number 13. Mark, Stacy, and Jennifer all received their weekly salaries. Stacy received three thousand dollars. Stacy received three thousand dollars, while Jennifer received nine thousand dollars. If the ratio of Stacy's salary to Mark's salary is three to four, what is the ratio of Mark's salary to Jennifer? All right, let's go. So let us put it in the order. They say Mark, Stacy, Jennifer. So we say Mark. Stacy, the order matters, guys, as I told my students. And then now we have Jennifer. Let's put in some numbers now. It says Stacy received 3,000, right? And Jennifer received $9,000. If the if the ratio of Stacy to Mark, so Stacy to Mark is oh they put Stacy name at the front. So that's three to four. What is Mark to Jennifer? First of all, let us establish how many Mark that Mark would have gotten. So to, to find out the ratio three to ten, it would have been one thousand, right? So if you divide 3,000 by 3, so that means one share is 1,000. So that means mark share would have been 4 times 1,000, which gives us 4,000. I like that question, you know, I really appreciate it. So mark received 4. All right. So that means this is 9. So this is the ratio. Let's see what they ask us in the end. What is the ratio of mark? Salary, so Mark must come first to Jennifer. Mark, okay, so Mark of four. So it's what is the ratio of Mark salary to Jennifer? So it's Mark is four, and Jennifer is nine. So it's four to nine. So for thirteen, it is have been. B. All right, let's move on to fourteen. Hit the right button, guys. In the which. Diagram shows the ratio of the shaded to unshaded parts two to one. You know, it's not so, you know, so wonderful, but it says shaded. So this is two times this in terms of value. So it's two to one. All right. So that would be A. So 14 would be A. This would have been one to two. It should not be correct because they say two to one. So the shaded part must come first, and they say two to one. If you like button, guys. All right.
Let's move on to number 15. What's going on, fine guys. Hit the right button. A child asks to convert 16% to a fraction. There, there may be an error. Oh, okay, there may be an error in the given solution. So line one, 16 over 10. Line two, 8 over 5. Line three, 1 over 3. Which line would the possible error occur? And that would be line one. First set mean out of 100. So it should not have been 16 over 10, but more like 16 over 100. Remember, percent mean out of 100. So for 15, it would have been line one, which is E. All right, let's move on to 16. Hit the like button, guys. Hit the like button. The line segment below represents four holes. Oh, yeah, I said to me. Mario correctly select point Q to represent an estimate of 220% on the line segment. Which of the following could not be the reason for choosing this point? So it would end up point Q. Two hundred and twenty percent is just little over two holes. Any random point between two and three would be correct. I'm gonna go with B. I don't want even wanna see the rest. Point P is too close to one, and R is too close to three. Point that, yeah. I'm sticking with my gut feel. Yeah. All right, let's go now. It says the diagram below shows two similar rectangles. Use it to answer item 17 and 18. What is the ratio of side AB to side EF? So let us figure out the ratio of side AB. So first we need to count the number of places. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, okay, it's three. And this one is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means it is three to six. Can be further broke down to one to two. So it's three can go into both of them. So let's just see which option is here. And it is indeed one to two. So for 17, it would have been that. All right. What is the ratio of the area of ABCD to the area of EFDS in the simplest form? Let us look at the area. So to find the area, it's a rectangle. Both of them are rectangles. So let us figure out the area. So it would be the area would be two times three. So the area for this is two times three. So that's six units square. Let's see what's the area for this. This is six already. So let's check one, two, three, four. So six times four would be 24. So the ratio is six to 24, but they did say the simplest, right? So it's the simplest. So we can use six, six into itself, one, six into that, four. So it's one to four. I like this question though, one to four. This would not have been in its simplest form, right? So you have to be very careful, guys. With, with curriculum base, you can make mistakes by not reading correctly. So focus on what you do. It is now 400 hours. What time will it be in eight hours of time? So basically, 400 hours would be 2 p.m. That's the first thing. So we add another eight hours to that. And that would have been 10 p.m. So that one is very straightforward. Once you understand what 400 hours is, then it should not be a problem. Carly's Baker occupies a rectangular workspace measuring 80 meter by 40 meter. He expects to increase his workspace by 50% when he moves to a new location. What could be the dimension of the new workspace? 
So first, let us see it's 80 by 40. So that's the first step. And it's going to increase it by 50%. So what's 50% of 80? 50% mean half of, half of 80. I'm just, I'm just going to do for 80. So just in case you do not understand the concept, then you can so that to the 40, right? So we're going to add 40 to this, so it's half. So that gives us 120. And likewise with this one, 50% will be 20 plus a half, so that's 60. So it's 122 by 60. All right, guys, so we're halfway there. Hit the like button, hit the like button, let's go. Which information is enough to determine the perimeter of a rectangle? A, the length of the diagonal? No. We can know the diagonal. Let me just draw the rectangle. We can know the diagonal and we cannot find it here. Right? The diagonal is these lines. That doesn't necessarily mean we can't find the area. The area of the rectangle, the sides of the angles, we know that the size of the angle already is 90. That doesn't mean we can't find the perimeter. But once you know the length of the sides, then that will be. So for 21, I'm going with the as the best answer. All right, let's move on to 22. The scale drawing of a floor plan is shown below. Kitchen dining room, blah, 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 blah. Which information is enough to determine the perimeter of the rectangle? Kind of full focus lens. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. That's what I'm going to try to say in another one. So let me give you the key. I don't even understand what I'm going to ask you. Let's mark it. Are you there question this? Will I set this? I get it. The floor scales for the floor plan shown below say on the veranda. One of these represents. Oh, I think I see one of my view. I think because um the lines are supposed to be drawn later. All right. So for twenty two. I'm going to go with A. All right, let's move on to 23. Which of the four groups below best shows the congruent, three congruent shape? May I pre A? Well, let me look at the other ones first. All right, this is too big. If a congruent is supposed to be the same size, if a similar, it's fine. So far, here's the best one. This note. Oh, this space, the space here is small, the space here wide. So it couldn't be this. Right, let me see what I'm going for that one. Oh, this here is different. You know? Even. We have one, two full box. One, two full box. It's a three full box. So it's A. A will be congruent, same size. They just turn it around and very smart. All right. All right. Let's move on to 24. Let me get up to my house. If 12 over 23 plus 9 over 23 is equal to P, what is the value of P? So basically, when the denominator is the same, we just add the numerator, so we add that to our nine and that's 21. So it would be the nice question though. If k is equal to 50, what is the value of k minus 34? So all we have to do is just substitute the value 34 for k. 
equal from zero to five. So we borrow one from this is a ten, a four from that is six, two from that is one, so that's one sixty. So for twenty-five, it would have been eight. From the pattern below, which expression can be used to determine the value of x? All right, so yeah, subtract five, subtract five, subtract five. That is consistent. So the next value would have been 75 minus five. So that would have been B. So 26 is B. Let's move on to 27. Which two operation, which two operations below would place in the box to give the same result? All right, if you add 94 plus zero, that is nine plus two. So I think is the, the answer. You know? If you multiply, if you, if you subtract, then you would have got nine plus two also. So I'm going to eat. All right, let's move on to 28. Hit the right button of people. What are you with, man? If box is equal to X and the triangle is equal to 1, which diagram would be used to represent the equation X plus 4 is equal to 9? Let's go. So let's put things in perspective. Let's say the box equals x, so this would have been nine x. So we can, we can, and then triangle one, so this equals four. So we can eliminate this, right? That's supposed to be x plus four, this is nine x. All right, so let's move on to this one now. We have triangle one, and the box are x, so that's four x. On the box at x, so that equal 9x. That's incorrect also. So we can eliminate two of them. So we have C. Let's see what C says. So it says the box at x. So we have 4 and this are 1. No, the box are x, so why not have x? Yes. It's a 1x and the triangular one, so that's a 4. And let's see, this triangle, yeah, I'm gonna go with C. Let me just write it better, guys. So I'm gonna go with C for this one, because it says one box is x, so that's x plus, and each one of the ones are gonna make 4, so that's 4. And a given nine. Look, we're still pre we're going with the one here. See there? Box a x so that a four x makes no sense. Yes, this is four x equal now. All right, so it is indeed C. Let's move on to 29. Which two operation symbols? Oh, that gun I did. I did it twice. 29. Which pair of numbers, when inserted in the box David, M and L will produce a sum that is less than one? All right, so let's try. If we try one here, it would be one fifth, and N would be three. No, put me this because guess what? We'll get the whole, and that's one and one fifth. So we'll move on to the next one. How was this? Do this in class, and you know, so we were with my students. All right, so let's try this one. So it would be two fifth, and n is five plus three fifth. That would give us exactly one. So it's a less than one, so we can eliminate this. And this one says no five over five. That is one already, so we can eliminate c. But let us still try d. So it's one over five plus three over four. That is not equal to one but is less than one so the LC on the 25 into 20 goes four times four ones four four to twenty goes five times three five fifteen so this works out to 19 over 20 which is less than one let's go guys let's go
let's move on to the next one now. Let's see what's happening. So we are we're going to 30 after this. We have about 10 more to go. Thanks for staying, guys. I don't know it's a minute. Always a helpful note, you know. Alright, so we're at 30 now. This year is doing a research on a project on the average number of lunches sold per day at Thursday. Let us go. What do I want to say? She arranged the data in a table and drew the table to represent her findings. Which paragraph shows the information on the table? So Monday, we get 60. Where is the, where is the graph? So Monday at 60, so I'm going to check, this is 70. We get the first one now. Alright, this 60 is correct. Alright, let's check the next one. Tuesday 70. No. So I'm way down at 50. So we can eliminate that one. So it's either the C. So 60 is above 60. So it has to be 60, 70. So it's B. Alright. Let's move on to 31 to 35. Now this is for 31 to 35. For this, there's more than one correct answer. Indicate your response by shading the letters next to the letters you choose. An example is given below. So guys, you have two options. Which two are properties of a triangle? Triangles have three sides. Some of the angles equal one eight. Both of those are correct about the triangle. So let's get ready. Which two statements below is placed in the box to make the equation true? All we have to do is just test it and see which one of the near equals 180 as the result. So we do 4, let's just try the 4. We have to naturally try it. So 450 minus 270 is that equal to 180. Let's see, 0 from that is 0. And we're subtracting. Alright, so bar one, seven from that be eight and that one. So A is correct so far. This one, one twenty plus forty is gonna give us one sixty. So that is not correct. Alright, let's just go now. Three eighty divided by two. That is gonna give us one ninety. So we can eliminate these two, so it has to be this one, let's check it out. 12 times 15, 5 plus 10, 5 ones, 5 and that's 6. Alright, so we're going to be multiplying by 10 now, so we'll put a 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1. Add, I'll get 1, 8. So for this one, it's A and D for the answer. So let's move on to 32. Which two values of x will make the inequality false? So it is saying that when you add x to a number, the result should be less than 30. So let's see which of these numbers, when you add it, it make it true. Greater than 30, basically. Alright? So make it false, not true. Sure. Alright. 10 plus 5 is your 15. 15 is less than 30. So that, that is that is not false, right? That is true. Because 10, 15 is less than 30. So you put in 10, you add 5, and the result should be less than 30, right? So 15 is less than 30. That is true. All right. Pause it. Say now. Let's try now. Eighteen plus five is less than thirty, which means twenty-three is less than thirty. Yes, twenty-three is less than thirty. So it has to be the last two. Twenty-five plus five is less than thirty. Let's see. 
30 is less than 30, that is not true. 30 is equal to 30, right? So this is false. And for 29, we're going to add 29 plus 5. And we already know it's about to be 24, it's not less than 30. So for this one, it would have been C and D. So remember, two options, guys. So we'll go through that in the exam, all right? There are 36 students in Bella class, 16 of them are boys, and 6 and 20 of them are girls. But I think the ratio of boys to girls could be written 36 to 16. But the teacher says incorrect. Which two ratio could be used to correctly present this relationship? So first what could you do read one? 16 to 20. Could it be 4 to 5? Let's check for 4 to 5. So, basically, if we divide by 4, we get 4 here. If we divide by 4, we get 5 here. So, this one of the ratio checks out. This is equivalent to this. Alright, let's check for 9 to 4. Well, technically, we could eliminate this since it should be boys to girls. So this one we can eliminate it because the bigger number is at the front. Right, let's check for 8 to 10 and see if that one is correct. If we divide both of them by 2, what would we get? We get 8 to 10. So basically, this one is also correct. All right, And this one will be incorrect. Let's move on to 34. Examine the pattern below and select two ways in which the fifth term can be determined. All right, so which is the fifth term? So we have 180. We have 180. By adding 10 to the fourth term, then subtract 100. So that's the first one. Could we obtain the next number by the by adding 10 and then subtract 0? Basically, we are going by 90, right? So if we have if we add 90 to this, we're supposed to get 540. So basically, our, they are saying if we have 450, add 10. Then minus a hundred, would we get five part? So this will give us four sixty. When you add the ten minus that, which is going to give us. Alright, so we can eliminate B. Alright, this one is A rather 34. B is would be correct as that's what I do to get this. But I see them doing that. Alright, so this one is correct. Alright, C says no by adding 100 to the fourth term. So let's do that 450 plus 100. Minus 10 and see if it give us 450. All right, so this will give us 550 minus 10, which gives us 540. So, yeah, we're not going to go any further because there's only two correct options. Let's move on to 35. If that represents 25% of a shape, which two figures below will be the complete shape? So, this represents water. That's why it's also kind of like everything. I'm going to go with the first one. 
just want to say I know I accept it. It's fine. Yeah, this is done. No, the same way I'm trying to go out of the Add me, add me, add me, add me, add me. Alright, so 36 now. For 36 to 39, indicate your responses by shading the appropriate letter in each row of the table given. Only one letter is to be shaded in each row. An example is given below. So let us zoom in on the example. Alright, A is shaded the top. Examine, example, examine the table and indicate which numbers in the left column is a prime number or a composite number. Okay, so is two a prime number? Yes. So we change that, leave out that. Can be prime and composite at the same time. Is six a prime number? No, it is composite. And 13 prime. Yeah, all right. You get the idea now. Tony is using a triangular prism to make the top of a toy house. He wants to know how much cardboard he needs to fill the roof. Indicate whether the information on the first column is necessary or not necessary in order to make this, this decision. I don't like these type of questions. <sighs> Alright, so it says the number of edges is that necessary? The area of the triangle is that necessary? The length of each rectangle would that be necessary? Um, the number of faces would that be necessary? Type in what you think in the comment section. I would say the number of edges is not necessary. Area of each triangle. I would say that necessary. Area of the rectangle, which is this. That's necessary. Um, the number of faces. Since the roof, I think the number of faces is absolutely necessary. So. It's on my option. Let me know what you guys think. I don't really like the type of question. Yeah. Let's go, guys. Hit the like button. Uh, we're almost at the end. We're almost at the end. 37. Examine the table below. Indicate whether the column. Hold on. Examine the table below. Indicate whether the number in column 2 is a factor or a multiple or neither a factor. Not a multiple of the number in column one. Alright, so let's go. So it's a column two first. Column two is a factor or a multiple of the number. Is a multiple or neither a factor nor a multiple of the one in column two. So we're going to start at column two. So first, is 8 a factor of 16? That's what they want. Is 8 a multiple of 16? Or is it neither? Alright, so 8 is a factor. So I'm going to choose A right here. It's not the amount of it should be not the leader. Alright, so we move on from there. Alright, let's move on to 7 now. 7 is a factor of 20. 20 is not a factor, is not a multiple. So for this one, I'm going to go with neither a factor nor a multiple. They're very nice questions. Alright, 50 is not a factor of 50. However, it's a multiple. Alright. So remember what they say, column 2 is a factor, a multiple. Uh, need a factor. So 
guys ensure that you read this table very carefully when you get it. All right, let's move on to 38. Shade the appropriate circle to tell each set describe a finite or an infinite set. So you're going to choose which is finite and which is infinite. And I don't like this type of questions because some of them can be so yeah. All right, the set of marbles in a water tank that will be finite has a limit, right? The set of counting numbers as infinite. Look at this stupid question. The set of here and everybody. I think it's finite, you know, because guess what? You hear them have a limit. They might not be countable, but they have a limit. That's a poor edge shine. <laughs> yo, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like this type of questions, you know, man. I don't like this type of. I don't like this type of Look for something like something just crossed my mind. The one right here. So you say, if you check, is 150 a factor? No. Is 150 a multiple? Yeah, it's a multiple. Alright. The okay, one multiple is a multiple of 50 because 50 times 3. Alright, so let's flash card to mine. I was so I just double check. It's correct. Alright. But this one now, wait, I said the set of here and the human body. I'm gonna go with finite because it has a limit. No matter when nobody tells me, say it has a limit. You don't have infinite number of years on your body. So where it shine. Alright, the, the graph below shows the rainfall in the first six months of 2018. Graph showing the average rainfall. So it showed the rainfall here, so in January about 62, February about 23, uh, March about 20, about 30. So, alright, let's see what I'm going to ask. Use the information in the graph to determine whether each statement in the table is true or false. So I said June has the most rainfall. That is true. So June is the highest bar. Yeah. Rainfall increases consistently every month during the first six months of the year. That is not true. Because guess what? January was the best. But it's February job, then it go, then it go. So it, it could have been close, but January messed up. January should have been right. So, so that I'm going to go with pause for that one. Uh, it says April has approximately twice as much rainfall as February. So let us fix that. April has approximately twice as much April. So I'm going to say April of both. Look at it, 60 plus. It's not 60. But let's see for which one they compare it. February, February, February. I'm gonna go with you yeah. February. Yeah, about 30. I was saying that yeah. I'm gonna go with you for that one. So guys, you know, I've learned how to read up on a graph. Alright, let's go. Alright, for the last one now, I'm gonna have to pick it up. So it's really, really fine. So guys, you have come to the very end. Make sure that you are subscribed so you can get my next video. It says for item 40, indicate your responses by shading the letter in the sentence or paragraph that may be correct. Each letter corresponds to a symbol from a given list of options. An option is used to be, can only be used once. Not all options have to be used. So you can only use it once, but you cannot use it. But you don't feel everything, right? So you have to choose what you want. 
the example here in order to make the sentence correct 16 must be added to 25 to make the result 41 so it will be 25 plus so yeah all right so that's the example let's go further down and see what the must be casey wants to make want to save money towards buying a cell phone price do not exceed ten thousand dollars her mother gives her three thousand to start she plans to save five hundred dollars each week let double represent the number of weeks use the symbols in the rectangle below to complete a number sentence that can be used to determine the number of weeks she to see money. All right, so we have fifty and five hundred. So let us go plus ten. So you have see five hundred a week, right? So. It, the week depends on how many weeks, right? So you have a times it by whatever weeks. Let's say it's eight weeks, then you have plus. So I'm gonna choose B for this for the plus. So 500 week, 500 the number of weeks where you save plus the 3000 is your them chicken. You know, necessarily have to be equal, it can be less than or equal to. Ah, why do you keep on it? I guess I want to save the money towards the cell phone. The price does not exceed. You notice them say does not exceed. See, so that you know, you know, have to be exactly equal. It say does not exceed. So that means. I would go with less than or equal to because guess what? So I'm going to go with B for this part. So I'm going to choose D. It didn't say it is exactly 10,000 units. So this is how it could read. So that's what I'm thinking. You see 500 every week. Uh, depends on how many weeks it takes you. But you have a tree toad where your mother gave up, and this is less than or equal to 10 toes. I think this would have been tough for a grade 6 child because the way we word, I mean, they would probably think it must be equal to that. But they say it, it does not exceed, right? So it means it's not passing. So it can be less than or equal to it. So that's why I choose. Alright? Thank you guys so much for watching. Ensure that you are subscribed. Ensure that you like the video. Ensure that you share the video with someone. And for those of you who might want my number, here is my number. Take it, guys. Take it, take it. You never know when you reach grade, whatever. You might be a teacher, alright? Another high school. So, 549 Thank you guys for watching. It's again to appreciate you all. I will see you in our next video. Take care, guys. All the best in your exams. This is enough spending some out without you guys in another video. Pick up everyone.